Welcome everybody, thank you for tuning in. If you're watching this video thinking it's going to be a how-to guide, it's not. I'm not going to tell grandmother or you how to paint. This isn't that sort of video. I just want to really talk about the products that I'm using on this job because it's a little bit of an unusual one. You've seen the title, you've got an idea where I'm going to be coming from. So let's crack straight onto it and get into it. Let's get started. Right, I'm on this job and a bit of an unusual one. It's a room that's slightly in the roof and the customers painted this room over the years themselves. I've done plenty of other rooms in this house, but this is a room that I've not done before. Now you can probably just see in that corner and this is what the video is about. Let's see if we can zoom in. That there was mold. Mainly because of the condensation, oh, not so much condensation, but you know, humidity in the room, single brick, um, ventilation, they've got new windows now, so the air is actually circulating, but particularly that wall was really bad with mold spores. Now, there's other areas in this room, I'm gonna spin you around quite quickly, I don't know whether you can see. Up in this corner, just, oh, let's get you up there. Up in that corner, exactly the same, and it's a bit unsightly and also not very nice to be sleeping in at night. So I've come in and I've said I've got just the product, just, just the right product and this is what I'm doing today. So we're going to talk about the products we're using on a room that's particularly bad for mould. So the product I'm using, I've mentioned this times many in other videos, bathrooms and stuff like that, the Glickstone and it's the Fungus Shield paint and it's for anti-mould and black spot paint. That's what it's for, anti-mould and for the black spot. Now, that can be mixed up in a multitude of colours and the colour that the customers picked is actually a RAL colour which has actually been mixed um, accordingly. But don't just go banging that sort of paint on. That area there, yesterday, I cleaned down. Now, you don't clean it down, a customer had done it before, Bleach water, don't use bleach water on mold and black spot and things like that. All you're doing is just giving something for the mold to be feeding off. The mold um, seems to like bleach, so don't do that. I've actually got the Glick Stone and it's the Fungus Shield and it's the sterilizing solution. It's concentrate and that bottle there, which is about 240, 250 mil, 240 mil, that makes five liters. So you probably won't need five litres at a time, so say that again. <laughs> you probably won't need five litres of cleaning solution, but that will make five litres up. And I got a proportion in there from the last time I'd used it, so I just made a nice little bucket of water with a brush, and I've scrubbed it over that surface, all over that wall, and it goes just round there. That bit I've showed you behind, I've actually put that onto the surface Always read the instructions because you don't put it on and then wipe it off. You put it on and let it dry because this solution will start working its magic on that mold and black spot and anything that you're going over. So yesterday I actually went over that wall twice. Went over it twice. It dried, it's warm day, got the windows open. That actually dried off within about half an hour to an hour. So later on that morning, I went over it with again, I went over it again just to make sure I'd not missed anything. And I've come back today and I will be getting on a bit of this paint. Now this is quite an easy room to do because the ceiling and walls are gonna be exactly the same. So we're painting this color, which is a bit like a, a cookie dough color over the ceiling and the walls and the woodwork will be white. Now, because I was waiting for that to dry, the sequence of doing this room, if you're a traditional painter and decorator and you want to know as a DIYer or somebody who's not done painting before, you do your ceilings, you do your wall, walls and you do your woodwork. Now, because I was, time is of the essence with this, I was working other things in with this while I was waiting for things to dry. So the only paint I had out yesterday, I coated that up. I'd already prepared my woodwork, I'd already rubbed that down with the murka, gone round anything that needed addressing, i.e. sanding down, uh, raking out on the angles. And what I did, I dusted off all, right, all the way around the edges and I applied, you've seen me use this before, it's the Hanford and Green and it's the all-purpose primer. 
So all the woodwork yesterday, while I was waiting for that wall to dry and other bits and pieces, I went round all the woodwork with that all-purpose primer. So that could dry off, that by the end of the day, I could go round with my cork gun, and you know which cork I like. It's the one time, it's interior, exterior, it's flexible, you can paint over it pretty quickly. But I went over all the um, skirting boards, anywhere that needed some cork, with that one time Red Devil cork, you can just see it there. So it was actually nice and dry for me today, which it is. Now the purpose of doing that yesterday is because I want to get the walls done, I will cut neatly in onto the top edge of the skirting, so when I actually come to do the woodwork, which will probably be tomorrow, I'm going to be putting two coats of, and you can see that there, it's the touch guard. Now this is the Hanford and Green paint, and this is in a satin finish, that is resistant to finger grease and things like that. Which in this room, where people are touching the door over that side, it's giving it a fighting chance because this being water-based paint, a lot of people will say water-based goes all cheesy and softens up on you. It shouldn't do with this. And particularly if you're using the correct sequence of one undercoat and two top coats, which I'm doing, we should be onto a winner. We should be. Now, the other product that I've used, I'll give them a shout out, um, Smith & Roger. They're very supportive of the channel. They, um, I'm gonna say, there are a lot of trade shows and a lot of people are picking up sample little pots of this, the Flow and & Bond, and quite possibly not knowing when to use it. Well, you can put it in your undercoat. You can put it in your top coat. Even though it says on the back of the can, it's only from the case. it's not, the instruction's wrong. If you speak to Ian at Smith & Roger, he'll um, advise you accordingly, but you can put it in top coat. Now, I've put some flow and bond into the undercoat to help it flow out, to help it adhere, and also help reduce brush marks, when I say about flowing out. It's got everything in it that, well, let's just put it this way, all the, good stuff that they said was bad in paint that they've taken out, this helps put that back in there to make paint a pleasure, a pleasure to use. Yeah, let's just say it that way. Let's just say it like that. Um, it's a 10 to one ratio. I just mixed up enough in the paint kettle that I was using with some of that, mixed it up, and it has actually gone on really well. It does help with adhesion. So if you have got problem surfaces like I've got, some areas here that were previously oil-based and it was starting to peel, it's, it helped with gluing down those edges as well because it makes it nice. So if you have got a little bit of a problem surface like what I've had there, I'm looking at, you can't show you, where skirting boards have got a little bit of a chip on it, I'd sand it down and you could actually peel it um, off if you so wanted. That, with that, helps with the adhesion. So that's a shout out for Smith & Roger. No sponsorship or anything, but I do like the product, and also I like Hanfield and Green. It's really nice eggshells and um, paint to use. Right, the other thing I want to mention, because people are going to say you could use Permawhite. I am going to be using Permawhite. It's the uh, mold resistant paint in these cupboards, because they are white in there, and it'll be interesting of using the two products. This is also uh, a mold paint, this has got a seven year uh, performance, um, uh, well, let's just say guarantee, everything's up to. Whereas, this, they reckon up to 20, 20 years. And this is actually endorsed by the residential, na oh, the residential, uh, the National Residential Landlords, the NRLA, which is the National Residential Landlord Association. This is what, housing authorities are using because of the problems with mold, black spot and things like that. So I want to try that in here because I know it'll work. And in the cupboards in there, which aren't so much of a problem, I'm using the Perma White. Previously, they've just been emulsioned out. 
So all in all, this isn't a painting video, it's more of a case of what we're going to be using on this job. I will be cracking on with the painting in a moment, I will come back and show you some of the walls that are painted. Once I've got a coat on the walls and I'm getting ready for the woodwork, it'll be a case of just getting all the sheets up that are on the floor, getting the carpet backed up and having a clean environment for me actually doing the woodwork. So I'll catch you in a bit and um, thanks for listening to this um, well, 10 minute video. Right, I said I'd come back to you. Sun's out, you can see that coming in through the window. It's really nice. It's got a nice breeze in here. Stuff is drying off beautifully. Now, this room, I've done ceiling and walls all the way around. It's taken two and a half litres. Drying time of this, they say normal conditions were actually a bit warmer today than normal conditions in the UK. So, normal conditions, four hours drying time. I've done this in the morning. I'm going to do my other bits these cupboards um, now come to dinner and I will recoat this room again later this afternoon so it's going to have easily three four hours um, between coats now fully washable this is about five days now I've got to say this paint goes on really well it's one of those paints that you know when people are telling you that you always add five ten percent worth of water into paint without even trying it do you know what this is one of those paints, if you added 5% water, it would not have the opacity, it would go on too thin and you wouldn't get the benefits of what this paint is. And what this paint is, is something to stop mold, black spot and the like. So always try your paints before you actually come to use them. This paint straight out the tin was actually perfect. It brushed really nice, even though that ceiling was, I'd probably say there's contract mat on there because it did pull slightly. I did actually find that it went on fairly easy. Where I got onto the walls, that's probably been more of a vinyl mat. There was more of a sheen to the surface. It brushed really nice and rolled um, equally as nice as well. This paint, really good, does what it says on the tin. I was telling you a bit earlier, it's a National Residential Landlord Association endorsed. This is the things that landlords need to be using to stop mold, black spot and the like and you don't just have to use it in bathrooms kitchens bedrooms you can use it all the way through your house that is a nice flat finish a matte finish it's scrubbable it's hard wearing and it's giving you the benefits of stopping all this stuff welcome back i'm coming to you now after applying two coats of the glickstone I have to say, covers really well for the first coat. You've probably seen that in the last section. Second coat, gone on a dream. What I've done, I've cut the ceiling in first, just neatly around the edges, and then I dropped onto the walls. Roughly about three to four hours drying time. I was well within that because it had dried lovely. Uh, my only negative was I've used a longer power roller to get the amount of paint on, the paint on. There's a few little fallout splatters over my arms not so much over my face because i've been working away from it but top edge of the skirting which i would be doing anyway i've got to just go round and nib down because there is a little bit of fallout from roller splatter that's all my negative criticism is mainly probably because the paint is that sort of consistency and it doesn't help when you've got longer fibers of your roller sleeve but saying that I do like that road to gold roll sleeve anyway, so I'm sticking with it. It gets a nice amount of paint on. So where I'd gone round with filling, I'd got the, the fill tight filler. You've probably seen that on a video there where I was talking to the rep at the Juice and Show. This is cracking stuff. It, I'd only got fine cracks. I've filled over with this. It dries pretty quickly. There's uh, an element of marble to it. It stops paint soaking into it. it goes solid rock hard it's a really nice filler to use for fine surface filling so that's a little oh rec well I'll say recommendation no sponsorship no money's changed hands i'll recommend that that's a nice lightweight filler when you've only got hairline cracks i went around with that and i have to say didn't have to do any spot priming over the top two coats has actually covered it nicely and i'd be hard pushed to actually see where those filler marks are with flashing so all in all glickstone paint really good on this wall particularly with all that mold that was there all i've got to do now is like i say just go around nib down top edge of the skirting board from any fallout from the roller and it'll be two coats of the touch guard from h and g 
So, jobs are good. Un. Yeah, and yeah, I know you're saying, what have I done in there? They've had two coats of the Perma White mold paint, so they're good to go as well. Right, see you on the next video. Please watch the videos that are coming up like now, and um, thanks for listening.